Hey gang, I'm Paul with Sledpack. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to assemble RTA cabinets. Let's get it done. All right, guys, here's the deal with RTA cabinets. RTA, ready to assemble. When I think of those, I always thought of particle board, cheap hardware, and flimsy construction. But these things have come a long way. You can still get the cheap ones, but these are pretty nice. Let me walk you through a few of the details. All the drawer parts, are a solid hardwood. They look and feel like maple with dovetail corners. The panels are all Baltic birch. There is no MDF or particle board in this cabinet at all. Unfortunately, there is also not a name of a manufacturer or even where they're from, the country of origin. I'm sure they're from Asia. I think on one project I saw Malaysia written on one of the boxes. But these come from the company where we get our quartz countertops. They're super easy to put together. But the one thing I don't like about them is the instructions. That's all you get. Pretty basic, and it doesn't even go into the, how to build a drawer at all or how to install the drawer hardware. So we're gonna take these, toss them in the trash can, and give you our tutorial on how Stud Pack builds these cabinets. Let's get to it. All right, let me show you what we need as far as tools are concerned. So we have two drills. You don't need two, but it makes it much easier. One has a Phillips to fit all the various screws that come with the cabinets and then we have a countersink bit in the other drill for a drywall screw and we're going to use that as a clamping screw while the glue dries. I've got some paper plates here just to sort the hardware and keep it from going everywhere. A utility knife to open the boxes, a nice pencil, combination square, and our glue. And here's the glue we're using, Tight Bond 2 with a fast set time. It says you can take the clamps off in 30 minutes. The reason we're using this is because we build our drawers first. And while they're setting up, we build our cabinet. So we've got all our pipe clamps over here. You're gonna have to have these to pull those dovetails in tight together. We've got these half inch bar clamps here and then a couple of these Bessie types. Any type will work, or if you even have those uh, three quarter inch bar clamps, those will work great, but these half inch ones are much lighter. So let's head over here. I've got the table saw set up as a drawer building station. I put a piece of cardboard there to protect the surface. So obviously that's your drawer front. And this piece is already attached to it from the factory. We have that part that's the same width as this one, and that's the back. And these two that are just a little bit shorter, those are the sides. So our first step is to glue the sides onto the front. So I'm just gonna put a little drop inside each one of those, just like that. And then over here, one, two, three, four. You don't need much at all. I just use acid brushes from the plumbing department. A paintbrush would work fine, but you definitely want to spread that glue out inside each one of these. I put it back in the water. I'm gonna wipe off this glue from the face just to keep it from squeezing out on the inside of the drawer. We're ready to go. Obviously this groove is where the drawer bottom goes. You need to line those up. Now let me go grab one of those Bessie clamps and we'll clamp that together. There we go. Now this is very tight because the jaws have hit the front here and that's as far as it's gonna go. So it's nice and flush right there. Here's the drawer bottom. I actually look at both sides. This one's a little darker to me than that one. I kind of like that. It matches the drawer sides a little better. So that's gonna be the inside of my drawer and that'll be the bottom of my drawer. Now there's no glue on this part, it just slides in. There we go. Now we're gonna get our back, put glue in each one of these dovetail slots and attach the back. Pull that apart, just like that. And I usually check the inside just to make sure there's no glue in there. Clean it up. Now this assembly is pretty much what I'm gonna call self-squaring, but let's check it for square. 30 and 30. All right, that's one. Let's do the two big ones. All right, that's our three drawers made for this unit. 
Remember, this is a three drawer base. We like drawers for storing things rather than a door that you open and have to go dig in the back. So here's the top drawer. These Bessie clamps work great, but on these deeper drawers, we needed four bar clamps. And up here at the front of the drawer, we cut this block to apply even clamping pressure across the whole dovetail so we didn't get a bow there. On the backs of the drawers, we could just move these around as needed to pull the joint together just so it's flush right here. So these are gonna dry while we build the case. And remember, just glue is holding these together. You don't need any fasteners in these dovetail joints. So let's head over here to this table and we'll show you the parts for the case. All right, here's the parts for our cabinet base. We have the left-hand side, the back, and the right-hand side. We know this is the left-hand side because there's our toe kick in the front. The way these are intended to go together, these already have a dado in them right here. These are dados. And on the back, there's this tongue machined in it. See that? Now that tongue goes in this dado when I stand this piece up. And then this dado is for the bottom of the case. So that has to line up. So this is how the factory intended this joint to be made. That tongue is in the dado. And then this little bracket is supposed to screw on right there into the four holes already drilled at the factory. But there's only one here and one at the top, and I want this to be stronger. So we're gonna glue and screw that whole joint together. So let's lay these out, mark our holes, drill them, and glue this thing together. This plywood frame on the back of the back piece is half an inch thick. And I want our screw to be right in the middle of that. So I've set up my combination square for a quarter of an inch. Just gonna mark them. We're ready to drill. All right, now that our holes are drilled for our drywall screws, let's put these supports on for the back of the drawer glides. It's much easier to do now before you attach this side because you have to run a screw in here and it's very difficult if that side is already on. So let's attach all six of these real quick. If they come with these flathead screws to attach them to the back, and it is possible to put them upside down. So this is the bottom of the case. This one would be incorrect. The drawer glides are gonna sit in there. We're gonna show you that in just a bit. But for right now, let's finish attaching these with these screws, and then we can attach that side. All right, all our drawer glide brackets are installed. Our next step is to attach the side to the back. We use the same glue that we used on the drawer. And we'll put a nice bead in the back of that dado. And then a little bit right there. I always stop short of the ends just to prevent any squeeze out. So let's stand this up and attach it to our back. And we're just using one inch drywall screws. All right, we've got the two sides assembled to our back. Our next step is to attach the face frame and slide in this bottom. But before we can do that, we wanna attach these four clips right here into these pre-drilled holes. One here and one at the top and two on this side. And I'm gonna leave the screws just a little loose so I have some play in this bracket. If they're tight, it's gonna be harder to line up the holes that screw into the face frame. All right, that's done. Now let's slide in the back. Now on this brand, it comes with one side finished, the cabinet color, and the other, the natural color. So since the inside here is the natural color, that's what I'm gonna to use too. You won't see it because it's a drawer base, but if it were doors, you would see it. All the way down. See how I'm flush here? That's what we want. So no glue here. The bottom gets attached to the back with some screws and a clip on the face frame. So let's grab that face frame, line it up, and attach it. So here's the back of the face frame. It has the dados for the side panel and a dado for the bottom panel. So instead of just relying on these four clips to attach it, I'm also going to glue it. I'm just going to use my finger as an edge guide for the tip of the bottle. Put a nice bead right there. Now 
and we'll flip this over and line up that dado with all the panels. There you go. It just clicks into place. See how nice and tight that joinery is? I really like that. Now when we put a screw from that bracket into the face frame, it'll lock everything together. Let's get that done. All right, our face frame is attached with glues and those four clips, and we've turned it on our side because now I want to show you how this cabinet company attaches the back to this bottom panel. It already comes pre-drilled right here for one inch drywall screws, which they give you. So when we did this on the side, it's basically exactly what the factory's doing right here. So let's run these three in to attach the back to that bottom panel. All right, the last step we have is the toe kick. Let's swing this back on its back, and we're gonna attach the toe kick with two of these clips into the factory holes. Let's get it done. All right, that's all finished. Now let's put in the drawer glides. All right, here's our drawer glide. Very nice, full extension, soft close. This hook engages a hole on the back of the drawer that the factory already drilled for us, and these couldn't be easier. This slot goes right into the bracket that we already put in. And then in the front, we get one screw right there. A flathead screw just like that. And this gives you some play in the back, so the drawer is always going to be square to the front. So let's put these other five on, and then we're ready to put our drawers in there. All right, so the cabinet is done. It does come with these corner brackets. They're made to go up here, and their intended use is, to, is so you can run a screw here up into the sub top, your plywood top for this that your stone's going to sit on. But it's going to be very difficult to get a drill in here to run a screw through our sub top. And I just usually attach it here anyway from above. So we're going to throw these away. So let's bring this inside while it's still pretty light. Unclamp our drawers and attach this bracket to the bottom of the drawer, which engages to our drawer runner. And then we can put the drawers in. All right, here's that hole I was talking about. So the back of the drawer runner engages there. And the front of the drawer runner clips onto this device. It goes right in the corner. So there's six holes in this thing. These three through the side, and there's three in the bottom. Can you see those? So we found that if you put these two in, it splits this wood right here. So we use this one and the three in the bottom, four screws on each side. Let's attach them, and then this drawer is ready to go. And a light touch on the drill, because they're pretty short. There's one. All right, let's go put these drawers in. All right, putting in a drawer couldn't be any easier. We'll let it slide back on the glides. And these two tabs are gonna go into those holes and you'll hear it click into the hardware we just installed outside. That's it. Look at that, full extension, soft close, beautiful. All right, bud, 14 more. You ready to hit it? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, gang, so dad showed you how to do the drawer base inside with all the screws and all the glue. And I'm gonna go ahead and tackle an upper just because it's a little bit easier and uh, you guys say that I need to do stuff. So here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna do this upper, right? So all we're gonna be using for this upper are these provided clips and the glue that we showed. Let me grab it real quick. Look at that, we might, we're just gonna have enough, aren't just we? Just enough, yep, perfect. And I guess the reason that we're not using screws on this one is because for the bottoms, for the lower cabinets, that's got a lot of weight inside. You got a lot of heavy pots, a lot of stuff like that, and you have the weight of the subtop and the counters, mm -hmm. right? So we wanted to beef those up a little bit. But with these uppers, the glue and the clips, it's all gonna be plenty. So if you guys wanna screw it, you can, but we're not going to. So we've got our two sides here, these thin pieces on either side with the holes drilled for the shelves and our back. And we're just gonna go ahead and put the clips in. We're gonna go ahead and pre-scroll them. Not tight, we're gonna leave them a little loose. All right, gang, we've got all four of our clips in. They're nice and secure, but they're loose enough to where we have a little bit of adjustment. And we found it easier to put in these bottom and top pieces first. That way you can wrap the two sides around this piece. It just helps everything uh, line up and lock into place. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this dado 
and then use these screws that they provide, the three little black screws, and we're just gonna screw it from the back. So let's do that real quick. Cool. More? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just flush it up here, each side? Yep. All right, cool. Yep, now there and there, and put that one on. It's hot, so the glue's running. Mm -hmm. Thanks for putting it on my notepad. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like holding it with my chin. Yeah, just, just focus on getting a shot, dude. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's not gonna stay, right? Yeah. So Until I, it's screwed in. Yeah, I would get those two in. That's what what I did. No, I got this. All right. Then you can put the three in the bottom of that if you want. Okay. Three in the bottom. Here, all the people who uh, comment about my my drilling technique, watch this. <laughs> nice. I can do it if I if I want to. Yeah. Sometimes I just like to. Give yeah, it the, give it a little the, touch, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame you for that. Uh huh. I have the same trigger finger you do. See, watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. Watch, uh -huh. ready? Just full send. I don't know. I just don't. Mm -hmm. Something just feels weird about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's the control. Right. All right. So as you guys can see, we're on our last side, but we've actually stood the cabinet up, and we've actually put it on its side. That way, when we're putting this last piece on, we're not fighting it. We're just able to like drop it right on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and put our glue in this little tiny groove here. And then we're gonna come over here and, and run it along the top of the sides. This plywood is porous. All right, we're just gonna kind of go around the edges. There's actually a little piece of wood right here. Yep. It's kind of in the way. I'm gonna and look pull at it this. off. Yeah. All right, and now we'll just put the clips on. Cool. All right. Put All right. It, put it back on its back. ready for the face frame. All right, we've got the face frame right here, actually. So the face frame and the doors are all wrapped up together. I found the safest way to take this off is to use a utility knife on the back side and just go right in that dado. So once you finish across there and all right. that other side. Right. Okay. Yeah, I got the face frame, you got right. the doors. Woo, I wonder what that was. Maybe like a muffler delete or something? The doors have been extracted. All right, now put the face frame with the dados facing up right on top of the carcass and we'll attach the six clips and on the face frame they, since it's a hardwood they pre-drill it for you so you don't split it mm. so we're making sure that the clip that there's a flat part facing the dado Correct. or all right mr stud pack are we gluing the face frame yes okay instead of putting glue in there mm -hmm. and then having it drip out when we flip it over i put the glue right here okay perfect. on the carcass And then use your finger as a guide like I showed you. Do I need to? No. It is a nicer bead though. Mm -hmm. Now, hang on. So. I see the holes. Those are for the hinges. Right. So that's the side of the cabinet. There you go. And then that clip mm -hmm. goes on the outside. Right. And these clips go on the inside. Once you line it up, it just drops into place. There you go. All right. Now you just have to work it into the yep. dado. Perfect. I'm all the way in. Yep. Cool, dude. And now we uh, finish these clips off? Correct. All right, let's do it. Those are good. Those are good. Yeah, I like that. All tight? Yep, I think I'm gonna get the damp rag and go around the outside, because I see a lot of squeeze out of Clean up any glue, right? Huh? Yeah, clean up any excess glue. Yeah. yeah. Squeeze out. All right, right now we're ready to put the doors on. Now, all of these cabinets come with solid doors just like this but one of the upgrades you can get is a glass door and one of our uppers is going to have a glass door so let's install it got these nice soft closed european cup hinges on it give you these flathead screws to attach the cup hinge to the door right here and these truss head screws to attach the hinge to the face frame so let's get these attached and see how it looks Perfect. 
Sweet. All right, let's put the shelves in here just so we don't lose these pens and so the shelves don't get damaged. And on this model, there really is no up or down. This can be the bottom or that can be the bottom. So if you have a single cabinet with one hinge on the left, you can flip it over now your hinges on the right. All right, perfect. That one's all finished. Let's close it up and bring it inside and add it to the collection. Now, if you go back and look at the first videos before we demoed, there was an upper cabinet here with a built-in desk. Now that's going to be our new pantry. So on this side, we're going to try to replicate that look. So this glass door cabinet that we just built, it's going to go right up here. And then we're going to have a, another cabinet on the bottom, two drawers, two doors, but all these cabinets come 24 inches deep and we don't want it to stick out. So we're going to modify it for this space right here. We want our new cabinet to be 14 and a half inches deep. So let's head out to the saw and show you how we do it. We have four pieces that we need to trim the two sides, the shelf, and the bottom. Our finished dimension wants to be 14 and a half. These are 24, so we want to take off nine and a half inches from all four pieces. So I'm just going to use a Sharpie, put an X on the part I want to remove, and then we'll go set up our table saw. Now we want to remove nine and a half inches from all four pieces, so I set up my fence nine and a half inches to the left hand side of the blade. Typically when you're ripping, the part that's between the fence and the blade is what you're keeping. In this operation, the part to the left of the blade is what we're keeping. It's a little different, but it's gonna take away some math and therefore take away some errors on our part. Instead of readjusting the fence three times for three different cuts, one setup, that's the way to go. So we're all set up, let's grab those four pieces and cut them. Now we have to cut this dado in the side that we modified. So this is our drop, and this is the factory dado. And we're simply gonna use it to help set our fence right here, and also to get the height on the blade. We've already set the height of the blade and the fence, so now we're ready to run this dado. Then we'll move the fence over to widen it to accommodate that back panel. Let's get it done. Looks a little skinny. Let's go give it a test fit. All right, that fits good. You could argue that it fits better than the factory dado, but it does because it's custom made, right? So now you can see these laid out just like the first one we made with the three drawers. It looks exactly the same, only it's not 24 inches deep. Now it's 14 and a half inches deep. And we did that with two setups on the saw. So let's go ahead and assemble this one just like those others. All right, our cabinet is assembled, but the one thing you may have noticed, when we cut the sides, we cut off the back row of holes for our shelf pins, so we need to duplicate those again. So we're simply gonna use the part we cut off as a template to redrill those holes. So here's one of the sides we cut off, and here's the other one I've already modified. I just simply ripped it off here at the back dado, and right here on this dado. So this piece is the size of the interior of our cabinet, if that makes sense. And this is the back corner. So all we have to do is put this in the cabinet with the back corner down here, get a five millimeter bit and drill through here and put a new set of holes into the side without going through. Let's get it done. Let's put those shelf pins in and put that shelf in, see how this thing looks. All right, cabinets are done. The only thing we have left for that last cabinet we just modified is the two drawers. And you might be wondering, well, how are they gonna fix those? So we're kind of wondering the same thing. Now, obviously we can't use the drawer glides that came with it. And the drawer opening in that cabinet is 15 inches wide. And this drawer is 14 and three eighths wide. For the hardware that I use, you need an inch of room total. So the drawer width has to be an inch less than the drawer opening in the case. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna to go to my cabinet supply shop and look at the undermount hardware and the side mount hardware for drawer glides and pick something up. And then we'll modify these according to the drawer glides 
that I can buy. And we'll put that in a future video. So make sure you stay tuned for that, uh, how we modify these drawers to fit that new cabinet. But right now, let's go inside and check out all the cabinets we made. As right, so we come in the back door, to the right, as you come in the laundry room, is this glass door cabinet. That's gonna go way up here. We'll probably do some kind of lighting in there. We haven't decided yet. So as you can see, the bottom cabinet is just a little deeper than the top one to accommodate this corner right here. So that's gonna look great. Over here, we've got everything mocked up over here. Even got a sample of the countertop on there for motivation. So we've got our spice cabinet here, our three drawer units on either side of our electric range and our upper cabinets all ready to go. I have the ladder here because this morning I was having flashbacks to the last two kitchens we did and we had to head off the joist over the kitchen hood because that joist was in the way of the ductwork. On this house, perfect. We don't have to frame anything extra, so good to go. Let's head over here and we'll show you the cabinets that go on this side of the kitchen. They're also all mocked up, how they'll go. This is our farm sink base. We have to modify that to accommodate the farm sink. It should be here this week. We actually had one arrive last week. Again, in pieces, just like the last kitchen we did. UPS guy was on it, told us it was broken. We sent it back. You'll notice these two are the same. These are cabinets designed to go on top of a fridge. So this one will go over our fridge. And like I said, this one we're gonna to convert to a farm sink base. All that'll make a lot more sense on cabinet day, but we wanted to show you all the cabinets. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. We hope you learned some tips and tricks on how to assemble RTA cabinets and even how to modify one if it doesn't suit the dimensions that you have at your house. So go outside to your workshop, grab your bar clamps, put some pressure on that like button for us, ask us a question, drop us a comment down below. Really appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't already. That would mean a lot to us and we will see you on the next one.